there's no question that we have an advantage there. As far as um, nervous energy, there better be. The last time the Owls stepped foot in Maryland's capital, it didn't end too well. It's a new season, and we have a preview of Temple season opener versus Navy coming up. Plus, there are some new faces on coaching staffs across different sports. Get ready. Owl Sports Update is here to tell all, starting right now. Hello, Owls fans near and far. Welcome back to Owl Sports Update. Alongside JJ Mahowski, I'm Courtney Murphy. We're both super excited right now. Yes, it's a big week for Temple Athletics as football officially takes the gridiron once again. I can't wait to talk Temple football. So, hey, producers, roll that bump. <laughs> Temple's football season opener against Navy is this Saturday. Even with Navy's current 1-2 and two record, Coach Carey believes Navy is still a good football team and is unsure how competitive the Owls will be on game day. From a preparation standpoint, there's no question that we have an advantage there because we've seen three game films of theirs, and we haven't played, so they don't have any of ours. Uh, but... What does that mean? How does that transition into competitive advantage? I don't know yet. I know what I see on the film. I see that at times, uh, you know, they're every bit as good a football team as you ever want to play. And then at times, um, you know, and to Coach's point, too, I've heard some of his comments, you know, they're just not executing at the level they want at different times. And unfortunately, in games, there are critical moments if you don't execute that can cost you games. Uh, whether those moments come in the first quarter or fourth quarter. And I think that that has really been uh, part of probably what is going on there. But for us, we just look at the film and we believe what we see on the film, man. That's a good football team. Navy might have the upper hand entering Saturday's game with three games under their belts. But when you have no stats, it's hard to really pick a winner. Sure, Navy's giving out up about 27 more points per game. And sure, they've turned the ball over that more than the Owls. But Temple hasn't scored a point, hasn't given up a point, hasn't even turned the ball over. And guess what? They haven't played a single minute of football. And still, the Owls are odd on favorites, according to the football index. Not a bad way to get into the season. Temple has been in training camp for four months, but they were only cleared for four full practices three weeks ago. Meanwhile, Navy has played three games already. The Owls are one of two American Conference teams to have not yet played a game. Houston, who has postponed two games due to COVID-19, is the other. Coach Carey indicated in his weekly press conference that Anthony Russo will be the starting quarterback. Experience is key for the Owls right now after losing a lot of big names to either the transfer portal or graduation following the 2019 season. This is a different Temple team than we saw last season I'm expecting the Owls to win their season opener 28-7. to I agree with you, JJ. Also, Coach Cherry mentioned in his PRAC conference earlier this week the competitiveness amongst positions. This gives the Owls the ability to adjust and know which guy will get the job done. The Owls also come in with a lot of maturity with potentially 11 graduates in the starting lineup. That maturity can definitely make up for leadership loss this offseason. Brandon Mack, Randall Jones, and starting quarterback Anthony Russo are just a few that have played against Navy before. So the Owls' advantage is pretty big here. I'm going to agree and say Owls are going to take the win, but my score being 28-10. The Owls know Annapolis very well. On December 3rd, 2016, Temple won its very first American Conference Championship when the Owls traveled to Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium to take on the Navy Midshipmen. Since that game, the Owls are 2-2 two and two when playing on Navy's turf. When they return this Saturday, they'll be looking for a little redemption. It's coming about six weeks later than expected, 
But when the Owls travel to Annapolis on Saturday, it will be their first competition in the COVID age of collegiate football. The Owls left Annapolis last December in a 42-point military bowl loss to North Carolina, dropping the program's overall record to 5-6 and six in games played at Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium. I look at it as just as a great opportunity to go down there and get the a military bowl memory out of our out of our heads. Trips to Annapolis have been either feast or famine over the last four years. There are two military bowl losses, but mixed in there are two road wins over Navy in AAC play. As far as um, nervous energy, there better be. Uh, every time you play football, there better be. Uh, if, if there isn't, it doesn't, means you don't care. And I know our guys care. So we've been very focused at the task at hand, but I know as the week travels on, uh, that energy will build like it always does. On the road, Navy hasn't been much of an issue for the Owls. Since the school's first matchup in 1988, Temple is 5-4 and four on the road against the midshipmen. Is good news for Rod Carey, who will coach against Navy for the first time in his career. The usual pomp and circumstance is one small aspect that makes preparing so difficult. To prepare for them any time of the year is tough. Either their scheme and the linemen fly off the ball. It's just not something that our guys, you know, see on a regular basis. The Owls enter the game as three and a half point favorites via ESPN. Kickoff is slated for 6 p.m. and the game will be aired on CBS Sports Network as well as 97.5 The Fanatic. With no fans in the link, Temple comes up with a new creative way of fan interaction. Hoots from Home is the new live stream virtual fan experience. Fans get a pregame show analysis and performances from the Diamond Band and Spirit Squad one hour before kickoff. During breaks and halftime, promotions and contests will take place. Fans can also be featured in the live stream using hashtag Temple Tough. Boots from Home launches on Temple's home opener against the USF Bulls on the 17th. Single digits have typically been reserved as jersey numbers only for the toughest Temple players. Unofficially, jersey number seven this season belongs to 13-year-old Jaden from Team Impact, a nonprofit which connects children facing serious and chronic illnesses with collegiate athletic programs. Jaden was Temple Football's final member of the 2020 recruit class. Currently, he attends virtual team meetings and will continue to do so until social distancing guidelines allow him to meet with the team in person. Let's end our football talk with former Owls who have gone pro. This week's spotlight is former single digit leader Isaiah Wright of the Washington football team. Wright made his official debut in week three against the Browns and he continued to play in week four against the Baltimore Ravens. This game, Wright put up 29 yards and he got back to his roots a bit as a kick returner where he put up 30 yards, but this wasn't enough to hold off the Ravens in a 31-17 loss. Coach Carey is starting his second season this weekend against Navy, but there are many other Temple coaches starting season one this year. For gymnastics, Rachel Page joined the staff as a volunteer assistant. Page has been a junior Olympic coach for over 25 years. Stacy Price and Bree Fitzsimmons joined the women's rowing coaching staff with over a decade of experience combined. Former Al Tasia Ford is now a Sabre coach for the Temple fencing team. Ford competed for her head coach, Nikki Frank, from 2010 through 2014. Women's soccer went through a regime change after Seamus O'Connor's resignation last November. Now at the helm of women's soccer is Nick Boquette. For more on the new faces at the Temple Sports Complex, we welcome in Al Sports Update's Kelly Faringer. Hey, Kelly. Thanks, JJ. The newest head coach on Temple staff is Nick Boquette, who was brought on to replace Seamus O'Connor. But only two months after taking over and one month after rounding up his new coaching staff, the entire program was shut down like everything else due to COVID. Now the Owls are playing catch up. A new season means a new start for the women's soccer team with an entirely new coaching staff. This includes Nick Boquette as head coach and his new assistant coaches, Claire Scanlon and Maria Lloyden. Owls have been finding ways to build relationships as the players are getting to know their new coaches in the middle of a pandemic. It's made us kind of take a step back and say, hey, what can we do to, to continue building the relationships absent of these normal channels that we have? 
We have been super diligent about meeting with small groups, meeting with the team, and now that we're able to be a little bit more in person, uh, meeting with the players individually. Boquette takes over a team that hasn't finished at or above 500 in conference since 2015, and that includes a 3-8-3 season last year in the AAC. And that makes this pandemic that much harder, building relationships for a team that also needs to build on its win total. For the girls behind me, I would like love for the coaches to change this program around, which I do have confidence and they can do that and get the program to where it should be. We're going to take care of what we can do today. We're going to show up. We're going to do the work. That sort of mantra got us through August, even when we had the ups and downs of COVID and the, the season being canceled. The OWL season has been postponed until spring, giving more time for Temple to get to know its new coaches. The American Athletic Conference has yet to announce schedules, but the season could start as early as February 3rd. Reporting for OWL Sports Update, I'm Kelly Faringer. The pandemic and Black Lives Matter protests on social and racial injustice has sparked some owls to engage with the community. Owl Sports Update's Marco DeLuca tells how one volleyball player helps keep others safe. But first, welcome Owl Sports Update's Jack Lynch to show how the women's soccer team is educating themselves. With the city of Philadelphia easing up on COVID-19 protocols, the Temple women's soccer team is back to practicing. Although their season remains uncertain, their stance on social injustice does not. Players and staff on the team have been using their platform to raise awareness on societal issues and condemn the injustices in our country. You know, we all started hearing, you know, the the the, the emotion and the pain in their voice and, and how much they were on their minds and was weighing on them and was burdening them. So, uh, I, I think all of us, you know, all of us coaches, really, you know, saw that as, as an opportunity to help. The AAC recently started the Athletes Advocating for Change group, where players and coaches from around the conference meet once a week via Zoom and work hand-in-hand -hand with their fellow competitors. Representing Temple as its leaders, junior Haley Gutowski and senior Ariana Daniels are just a few of the many that have benefited from these meetings. Haley and Ariana not only were, were more forthcoming, you know, were very forthcoming with what their honesty and their truths were, uh, but they're also wildly knowledgeable. Um, people working with these other girls are they're so awesome they all have different resources and like ways that we can g bring back to our team to get our team involved and get them educated and keep the conversation going so um it's really awesome to have more resources and to be able to talk to them the societal issues at hand are bigger than sports and the meetings that the aacg provides gives people all over the conference an opportunity to learn and voice their opinions Reporting from Temple University's main campus, I'm Jack Lynch, Owl Sports Update. I'm Marco DeLuca at McGonagall Hall with the women's volleyball team. When the pandemic started, most people began watching new TV shows while trying to relax. But others used this time to pick up a new hobby. 6'1 freshman Nina Simone Williams finally got the chance to learn how to sew, not only for herself, but to help keep others safe. Because I, I would always have to go get my clothes tailored all the time, so I was like... I can do it myself. Like I can tailor my jeans a little tighter. Like it's not, it didn't seem too complicated. And so I just thought it'd be a perfect time to start practicing. Williams did not only start to tailor her own clothes, but also in this global pandemic, she started sewing masks with her new passion. She eventually created more than 800 masks with various different fabrics. First, my oldest brother, he's a nurse. Him and his wife, they're both nurses in Seattle. And so they're complaining about how like they're running low on masks and how they have to keep reusing the same one. And so I just thought, like, I have been in the sewing machine. Like, I can easily learn it for you guys. And just, I just kept practicing. And I realized that so many people across the country need masks as well. A bunch of my family's friends, they want masks. And they have, like, kids. And I started picking up more, like, masks for, like, women, men, and, like, kids to help tailor them. Williams was able to donate the money from the masks she sewed towards various organizations that all benefit the Black Lives Matter movement. I feel like it's very important for me to do that because as a black woman myself, I feel like I was able to help to help other people because I donated to like those who are like in prison, like just to help bail them out. So I feel like it was very important for me just to like give them my support and just let them know that like I'm there for them as well. Williams will now focus on getting ready for her first year with the volleyball team when the season starts up in the spring, but she will continue to sew in the future for herself and others. Reporting from McGonagall Hall, I'm Marco DeLuca, Owl Sports Update. Well, it's been a while since we've got your game predictions, Owl Nation. 
So let's hear them now. Heading into the weekend, are you confident that the Owls will sink the midshipmen? Engage with us on Twitter at Owl Sports Update. Our time has run out for now, but be sure to follow along with Owl Sports Update through the weekend. We'll have coverage of Temple football season opener at Navy on Twitter at Owl Sports Update. Check out our website for more content at owlsportsupdate.com. Inside the Nest will return to your screens next Thursday with hosts Adam Crinali, Ray Dunn, and Dom Gillespie providing a full recap of this weekend's matchup with Navy and a preview of the Owls home opener on October 17th. Owl Sports Update with Brooklyn Vaughn and Jackson Neal returns next Friday, where they'll cover all things Temple Athletics. For JJ Mahowski, I'm Courtney Murphy. Have a great weekend, everyone.